Okay, so the first pattern that I'm going to do is this guy, which is the black nose dace. And in the notes that I sent out, I noted that it was a pattern that was, it's as old as me. It was uh, designed by Art Flick in 1947. Back then, that time frame, they could probably still use uh, the polar bear in the States. So it uh, uses polar bear as the underside for the pattern. So the, the hook I'm putting in the vise here is a uh, Hanex, uh streamer. Oops. That's it there. Streamer wave. It's a heavy wire uh, barbless. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to use six aught black thread. And I'll start it just about a third of the way down the shank of the hook. And I'm going to hold the tag end of the thread up so that when I wrap down the shank of the hook, the piece of thread I'm holding up will tend to force the wrapping thread down up against the ones that are already on the hook. So you get a nice smooth wrapped body with no gap between thread wraps. That's a little trick if you're going to dress the hook and you're not really good at doing tight thread wraps. That might help you out a bit. Now, at the back end, the tail is just red wool. And to try and minimize the bump, I'm going to cut this at a little bit of an angle. Just a little bit of angle. I'm going to set it down on the hook shank. And with a loose wrap, i got to get that twist out of that. One of the problems with running a thread down the hook like that is they tend to spin the thread up. So if I let the thread hang and spin it counterclockwise, it uh, takes that twist out. So once I get it on there nice and tight, I'm going to take it right back to the bend and cut about half of a gap behind the back of the hook. So that's the tail of the fly. And to make it easy, I'll do this now instead of later. Using my bodkin to fuzz, fuzz it out a bit. Just pick apart the twists in the, the wool. Bring my thread back up. Again, fairly, fairly even wraps. And I'll take the, the uh, rib I'm going to tie in first. And the rib is uh, oval tinsel. Uh, that I've got some nice French stuff actually. I tie that in right at that, that one third point again and hold it on top of the hook shank and wrap over top of it all the way down. Now, some guys just tie the tinsel in at the back, but I find if you do that, you end up with a bump back there, a fairly sizable one. I'm going to leave that uh, just a little bit to the far side of the hook from where I've tied that in, not on the dead top. The next thing I'm going to use to build the body is this uni mylar, which is tinsel, flat tinsel. This is a size 12. This is a sort of a medium sized tinsel. And this mylar stuff, it comes with a gold side and a silver side. So once again with this thing, I, I'll take my scissors and I will cut it at a bit of an angle right at the end so it doesn't make a bump when I tie it in. And when I tie it in, I want to tie it in on top of the hook, in the bucket here, with the gold side up or facing out. Tie it in by that, that little pointy tip. And I gotta spin the bobbin to get that, get that twist out. So you see what happens when I do that 
spin to the bobbin. If I'm going to do a loose wrap, if I spin all the twist out, it will the, the loop will flop towards the back of the hook instead of towards the front. And I'll wrap that right back to where the tinsel is. Bring my thread back up the shank of the hook. Okay, I'm trying to keep it relatively even. When I get to where the tie-in point is there, I'm gonna make a half hitch because to try and, and control where the tinsel and the ribbing goes, I'm not gonna hand wrap that all the way up. I'm gonna use my rotary feature on the vise. So I bring my bobbin holder up to this front here. And I'll grab hold of the tinsel with my hackle pliers. This makes it much easier to handle. Oh crap, that pulled out. <laughs> How about that? I did not get that in there very well. Must not have captured enough of the tip. Some threads twist a lot more than others. There we go, get on there. Back to where we were. So hold on to the tinsel with my hackle pliers. And I'll hold it up and I'll make that first turn carefully right behind the tie-in point so that the gold side is in and the silver side is out. And from that point on, I wrap using the rotary feature. You've got to avoid the hook point for the first wrap or so. And I'll try to make individual wraps right beside each other. And if you have really wide tinsel, you can overlap them. That was not long enough piece of tinsel, so there we go. So when I get to that tie-in point, Come over the back three times. And then I'll pull it back and I'll wrap over the tag end there a bit. I find that if with tinsel, if you don't do that behind and then wrap over top, it will sometimes come undone on you and then you gotta start all over because it springs out like a little coil spring. So once again, I'll Throw a quick half hitch there, put the bobbin rest back, and I'll do the same thing with the rib. And here, I what I do with this now is I'm gonna to try to place the rib on the gaps where you see a little bit of black showing through. Don't always get it, but it's close. So I get to that spot again, same place, and two or three wraps behind. Two or three wraps in front. Don't mind if I have a little bit of a bump here. As a matter of fact, the bump is gonna help a little bit. That's what I wanna do here is where I've tied that stuff down, I'll use my thread to build a little bit of a ramp so that you can see it's a little bit sloped from the front to the back. And what that'll do is when I tie the first set of hair on, that's going to cause it to stick up a little bit. So now the, uh, 
the underwing is this stuff. Now we call this polar bear flies because that's what this is, is it's polar bear. And I've got a variety of different pieces of polar bear, but I've sorted through them for ones that have about the right length and the right kind of uh, sort of curve to them. Don't want them too straight. Uh, I want to make it relatively sparse. So I'll pick a bunch of polar bear that looks like a little half a gap if it's just sitting there. But this is going to get thinned down quite a bit when I'm done. I hold the, the polar bear up and get right down to the hide to clip it out. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of fuzz there. So I have man's best friend when you're working with hair is a fine tooth comb. And I will brush out all of the fuzz at the bottom. Now, polar bear is kind kind of weird, weird, much weirder than deer hair. Um, it's, it's hollow. And the reason why polar bear works so good as a fishy attractor is it's hollow. And it's got a core that is transparent almost. So it acts like a fiber optic fiber. And this is how polar bears stay warm. The light hits the white fur travels down the hair and hits their skin, which is black. So it takes the heat that's coming, heat and light that comes down the polar bear and hits their skin and it warms them up. Uh, amazing product, but it had, that's what gives it that iridescent quality. Now to make the ends even, you can see there's a kind of all over the place in terms of length. I'm gonna take the really long ones with my, pinch them with my left hand fingers pull them out and then line up the tips. I got a couple more that are like that. Line up the tips. This, because you can't stack this stuff. It's so wiry that if I was to put that in a hair stacker, it wouldn't work worth a darn. So now I've got them kind of lined up. Got a couple of really long ones here I'll take out. And by the time I pull the long ones out, you'll see now I've got a relatively sparse clump of polar bear. I'm going to measure the length of this to about a gap behind the tail. I don't want it too long. I'm going to hold it with my right hand at the eye and pinch it right where I've got the tying thread to tie in with my left hand. I'll take my scissors and this is the trick that you're going to learn with the clouser is I don't have a round bunch. I squeeze it so it's flat. Then I'll take my scissors and cut it about an eighth of an inch, yeah, three sixteenths in front of where my fingers are. And I'll cut it square. See how that's nice and square. I'll hold it down, bring my tie thread right back to the back of that lump. And I'll hold the hair down at an angle with the shortest part of the hair in front of where my tying thread is. And you'll see that the front edge of that square cut hair is now almost behind the eye. And I pinch it nice and hard vertically, do my first wrap, snug it really good by pulling up, not down, pull up, not down, and I will wrap it back. And you'll see when I've done that, that all of this hair is now in front of the eye of the hook, behind the eye of the hook. Now to make this stuff stand up, I'll pull, well, I still haven't let go of it. I'll pull it up and wrap my thread in behind once and in front once. And once again, in behind and then in front. And when I do that, you'll see that it separates the hair up from the body of the fly. 
It's that little wrap behind and then in front kind of holds it up. So that's the polar bear. And to get the line, of the, the, the lateral line on the black nose days, I'm going to use this stuff, which is black bear hair. Um, and I want a moderate amount that doesn't need to be long. And I'll do the same thing. I'll pick what I think is probably too much to start with and pinch it all together. Come right down to the hide again and cut it right tight. And the same thing with this. It's not quite as fuzzy on the bottom, but there's still some fuzz in there. So I'm going to take the fuzz out with my comb. If you don't take the fuzz out, you can't really line up the tips very well, and it gets bulky when you tie it in. So it's nice and clean there. I see this stuff is all over the park as far as length is concerned. So I'll take the really long stuff, and I'll do exactly the same thing as I did with the polar bear. I'll try to line the tips up. We got a couple of real long ones out of there. And this stuff has a bit of a curve to it. And I, I, I want it to flare a bit. So I'm not trying to curve it down like you would normally with a streamer. I want it to splay out a little bit. I'll measure this to the, just a little bit. The tips of them are about the same length as vertically as what the under hair is so that it, it makes a vertical shape there. When I get it in the right spot, I'll do the same thing. Hold it there, cut it about three sixteenths in front of my fingers on a on the square. And my first wrap is going to be a little bit in front of where I have the white hair tied in. Again, squeeze it so that it's vertical, you know, flat, and then at an angle like that. And make sure your thread is behind the bottom of the cutoff hair, otherwise it'll pull out. Couple of wraps. And the trick behind holding, the reason for holding this flat and squeezing it when you put it on, that keeps the hair from rolling around the hook. And before I let it go, I'm gonna do the same thing with it as I did with the white, the polar bear. I'm gonna pull it up in behind and in front. And in behind and in front. And what that does is that gives it that separation between the black and the white. I might got a little bit too much black, but that's okay. Now I'm coming up here and I'm gonna start making the head a bit. So I wanna put some thread in between the Tied that last couple of bunches of thread, there's a bit of a bump there. And I want to fill in a little bit between that bump and the eye of the hook so that I have a spot to make the head of the fly after I tie the last batch of hair. Now the last batch of hair is in the pattern is this stuff, it's bucktail. Um, the thing I found with bucktail is it it it's this buck particular bucktail is a little short, so it's going to be a little hard to handle. Um, I don't know where my other piece disappeared to. This uh, this is maybe not quite long enough. And I just happened to find some brown polar bear. So I'm going to use some brown polar bear to make that uh, top wing. And I'll do the same thing as I did with the black bear here, or polar bear, and cut it off right at the right at the leather on the bottom. I like the color of this stuff a little better too. So once again, because it's polar bear, it's got a lot of fuzz at the bottom. Now, if you did this with uh, bucktail, you have to, you, you don't need as much hair and you have to be careful because it will tend to flare when you put that first batch on. So your first wrap with bucktail has to be a lot light, looser than what it does with this polar bear. 
couple of long strands there I'll take out. And I'll take the, once again, take the long ones, pull them out, line the tips up. It's about right. And I'll measure them. Again, trying to get the ends kind of vertically like that. Lay it down. And I'll tie it about there. Tie it right halfway in that bump. And uh, cut it off square. Hold it down at the tie in point with the tips right at the eye of the hook. And pull up, cinch it down. Not letting me catch that bat there. There we go. There we go. So this is where we build the head as a, a fairly large thread head. Uh, it's not being, being ornery here. And it's gonna be a triangular shape. So you need a fair bit of thread. Once I get it down there, I can build a nice smooth head back towards that. And you'll notice I have not let go of that brown hair yet for the same reason as I did with the other. Now this time I'm not going to pull too hard and if it was bucktail I wouldn't hardly pull at all. Put a couple of wraps in behind and in front and behind and in front and build that nice smooth head right down to the eye of the hook. So now you see I've got a three layer minnow and this one's been tied pretty chunky so if you want to tie it sparsely you just use less hair build the head when i get right down to the eye there i will do my whip finish And being belt and suspenders guy, I'll do a second whip finish. The last thing we do is we get our friend Sally Hansen's Extreme Wear nail polish. And we'll put that on the head of the fly. so it penetrates well right underneath. And let it dry. So that's Black Nose Days. So any questions, comments? I think I have to turn off the, the highlight here to do that. Da, da, da. The spotlight. Just there like a side a comment. Big hey, pardon? You'd like it a lot um, fuller than the black nose days as I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. The, I, I, I like the chunkier. I like the chunkier streamers. Yeah. Uh, this is more, for me, would be more of a lake fly than it would be a stream fly. No, no, it's a pretty, it's, it's a pretty fly. Yeah. I mean, when you say it's, it's, I mean, it's so old, it's obviously, you know. Yeah. And, and, and it, it is, you know, this, this is the sparser version. You know, right. It is quite a bit sparser. But uh, we tied that one about a year ago, Dave. The one you just lifted. Yeah. Yeah. Much sparser. So hmm. that's him. Um, now, this next fly is also a polar bear fly. I don't need the, I'll put away my bear hair. Oh, yep. For those who haven't 
haven't ever used it. I've used bear hair like this, really long stuff like this. If you take about oh, half a dozen strands of these and tie them in by the butt, or the tip, get the tips evened up, tie them in by the tip at the back of the hook and then spin them around so okay. it makes a little rope. That's the body of the original carry special. It was actually a rib, ribbed body made out of bear hair. So for the next one, we're going to use polar bear and polar bear. <laughs> um, white polar bear for the underbody. And for this pattern, chartreuse, but you can also use other colors like uh, gray and pink and purple and dark green uh, for the clouser minnow. These are the colors that I use for fishing for coho. Um, the other thing you need is a little bit of flash and this is, I'm using this uh, flash of boomerang flash. It's fairly lightweight flash. It's not the really wide, heavy stuff. But it, and it's kind of an opalescent color. The hook is uh, is these guys here, eleven bucks for for uh, twenty five thirty six hooks at uh, Robinson's. Um, this is a size six, and it's a uh, streamer, three x long, two uh, x gap, and heavy. Because I'm going to be using them to catch coho that might up to 15 pounds, and uh, you need a pretty decent hook for that. The other thing is these guys; these guys have a little bit of an upturned eye. It's a barbless hook, so it it hooks well. It's a down eye hook, and there's a reason for that, and I'll talk about that later. Let's get this on the spotlight again so we can see. And you'll probably lose me for a second here. All right. So we're back. Um, thread for this is a, a white three aught. Uh, it's a fairly hefty white thread. And the reason for that is that the white polar bear. Uh, that I use for the underbody, uh, the bottom body, uh, it gets tied down the shank, so it gives a white body to the fly. And I will start this right behind the eye and wrap the white thread down, uh, halfway down the hook, and I'll stop there. Now, I... Uh, was fortunate enough to meet Bob Clouser in person at a fly fishing show in Calgary. And he showed us a few little tricks on how to tie the Clouser minnow. Now, one of the things you want to do is don't go too close to the eye of the hook when you're setting up your eyes. So I want the eyes to be sitting about at a third of the shank length back from the eye. That's where my thread is now. What I do there is I build a bump of thread. This is part of what makes it easier to keep the eyes from spinning around the hook. So you see that little, little bump there. I'll leave my thread in front of the bump. I like these uh, dumbbell eyes that have uh, a yellow with a black center. I like the coloration of those. So there you have the dumbbell eyes and they're good, reasonably hefty eye because you want them to flip the fly over and sink it a bit. So I'll take the dumbbell eyes, I don't know if you can see this, I'll push it right up the shank of the hook behind the bump to where it just starts to hit the bump. And then the thread comes over the top, underneath, back up in front again. Then 
over the top, back underneath, and in front again. And you'll see, I don't know if you can see that, but the bump is in front of the eyes. And I've snugged it up so that that eye is right behind the bump. I'll do several wraps like that, diagonally front to back, and then several wraps back to front. Now what I've got now is I've got them snugged right up against that bump. So the bump fills the little gap in between where the eyes are. And what that does is if you now wrap your eyes on good and solid, both front to back and front back to front, those eyes are not going to twist now. It's the bump fills that, that little hourglass shape at the front of the fly and it stops them from twisting. So I, you'll see they're not going to wrap around the hook anymore. You see some guys that say what you got to do when you wrap them on like that, then you got to do a figure eight wrap underneath and snug it down. Well, if you do that, they'll spin around the hook. So by doing that, and the last thing I'll do is just to make sure that they're not going to go anywhere. I have this uh, brushable super glue you can get from home hardware. Uh, it's called Home Bond. And I'll just put a little dab in there. What that does is that uh, makes sure that, that those eyes are not going to go anywhere. Nice and solid. Bring my thread up to a little less than halfway between where the eyes are and the front of the hook. That's where I'm gonna leave my thread. Right there. Ah, white polar bear. Here it is. Um, let's get, so this is when I'm gonna tie a little, maybe a little bit sparser than the last one. And once again, I, I'll pick a, a length of polar bear that is reasonably, maybe t double shank length from the hide. And I wanna, this, this is a little sparse, I wanna get a reasonably good chunk of polar bear. So I'll pick that chunk, I'll get right down again to the, to the hide like the last time. This is quite wiry, this particular pelt of polar bear. So there we go, got it. Got a chunk of polar bear there. Once again, hold the tips and I will comb out all of the fuzz. Now, I'm not so concerned about evening the tips up. I want this to be a little bit splayed out, a little bit fatter. So I will measure two shank lengths and Hold it right with my left hand, right where the eyes are. And do the same thing as I did before. Pinch hard so that it goes flat vertically. And I will cut this off again. Not quite a quarter, little between a quarter and three, three eighths of an inch. Cut it off square. And it's the same thing. I will hold this so that the tips of the polar bear are right behind the eye of the hook, but the thread is right back almost where the eyes are. And I'll come down on top and pull up. Down and pull up. I did not get enough hair in there. There you go, far enough forward. There you go. There we go. It's wrapping on the hook on me here. I want this to sit on top of the hook shank. And you'll see I've got that so that now the hair is right at the tip of the eye. 
and I'll wrap back right up to the eye and then back. And I want to clip out the, the loose strands here so I don't gum up the eye. Once I get that sort of a little bit of a torpedo shape there, I'll come back right and come under the eyes, pull the hair down in behind, and pull that down to the hook shank. I will hold the hair up at that angle of about 30 degrees or so, and I will wrap all the way down the hook shank, binding the hair down to the shank, all the way down to the bend. This gives this thing a white body because of the polar bear. And I will do the same thing as I've done before, in behind and in front, in behind and in front. And then wrap my thread right back up the shank. When I get back behind the eyes, I'll flip the hook over and bring my thread over in between the eyes and wrap down a little bit in front of where the eyes are and leave my thread hang there. This is where I put flashing. I'll take this uh, ah, marabou flash. And what I want out of here is, is two long strands. Two, two long strands. And with those uh, two long strands, what I'll do is fold them in half like that. And cut them in half. So I, I don't need a lot of flash here. So I have my little four little strands of flash. I'll take the first two, keep the others in my palm, and I'll wrap them around the thread, half, half on each side of the thread. Come on, let's get there. This is always a pain. And even up, relatively even up the ends. Let me get rid of this. Ah. Sometimes this, this really fine stuff is hard to handle. It sticks to your hand because it's got static electricity. All right. I'm re being really ornery today because it's a little drier today. So I got them in half, wrap them around the, the, the thread, pull them up and I will tie them down on top of the hooks, on the near side of the hook, just in front of the eyes, and then wrap back over top of them so that they're on top of the hook on the near side and in, lay down in between the eyes straight back. Then I'll put my thread back up front and take the other two strands. And fold them around the the thread. Come on. Man, that's being ordering. Let's try again. I have that, that strand got a kink in it. Do this again. Cut it in half. Wrap them around the thread roughly halfway. And this time I'm going to tie them on the on the top, but on the far side. Having so much problem with these today. There we go. On the far side. And once again, wrap them so that they're just a little bit on the far side of the hook and right back to the eye. So what these things are gonna do now, they will hang down between the eyes, but not hang down too far. So I've got a couple of strands on either side that uh, are underneath the eyes. 
And if I got them right, I can, there should be just about the same length as the tail. Now the chartreuse uh, polar bear. And uh, got some stuff here that's uh, nice, a little bit of curve to it. And again, I'll, I'll pick out what looks like at the base of it is, is a lot of hair, but there's a lot of fuzz in there. So once again, down to the leather, cut them right off so I maximize the length. Pull them by the tip. Open fuzz. See that? A lot of fuzz comes out of these guys. Now these are really scraggly. This particular bunch is really scraggly. So I'm going to do the same thing with these as I did with the bucktail before. I'm going to pull them out and try to even the tips up. Measure them for the length of the fly. And hold them in the right spot, right in between the eye of, of the hook, eyes that are on the hook. And that quarter inch in front again, cut it square. And the same thing as I did before, hold them down at that angle with the tips right at the Eye of the hook. Pull down and wrap. Just ease them back. This is always a pain because you sometimes get your fingers caught on the point of the hook. <laughs> okay, now that I got there, I'm going to build that tapered head right back to the eyes and cover that up so it's a nice white color all the way and then whip finish right behind the eye hook. make sure the eye is clear and turn them off See, I didn't wrap in behind them that time because I want the the hair to uh, to go down and keep the flash from hold the up closer to the hook shank to keep the flash from uh, sagging down. So there's the there's the finished fly. I'll put a little bit of glue on the nose. And delete the highlight. So there we go, we're back. So that's the Clouser minnow. And it fishes this way. It fishes with the green up and the white down with the flash well protected so it doesn't get stuck out too far. And that's about the right size for fishing for the coho, the, the, the coho the last couple of years. I think you might want to make them a little bigger for the coho that are, the, because the herring this year, because the herring that has showed up the last year and a half have been bigger. So this is basically a herring pattern. Yeah, that's the secret is those eyes, uh, the yep. location of the eyes. Yeah. Yeah, I found yeah, I started to crowd my head. Yeah, you got to keep them back at least a third of the shank length back from the front. Mm -hmm. and, and the other trick is, like I say, that business of, of flattening it out when you go to put it down, because yeah. then you end up with a, it, it causes this, the polar bear to flare a little more when it's tied on the hook. Okay. Just a little more body. That's him. So. I've got a couple more here I've showed you before. This is this is a darker, darker green, and that's been tied very 
fat. And this one's skinny. And that, the reason that's really fat is because that particular patch of polar bear was really wiry. Yeah. Hmm. Neat. But I've tied those in, in purple and pink and dark green and a little bit of uh, gray sometimes. You never know what they're gonna want. So that's the two. Now it's uh, Florence's turn. Okay, so this is going to be the speed tying because I only have 10 minutes to go. Uh, don't need so, to work. Um, <laughs> so this is this is the intended fly. And basically here you want a slightly longer shank hook. So the the kind of the standard or used to be the standard uh, masthead 34011 uh, fits that uh, fits that profile. So um, I do have a size four hook in device. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a modified version of the picture that I showed you. So this pattern was originated sometime in the 90s by Vic Bergman in southern Alberta. And the intended target was Lake Whitefish, uh, Lake, uh, Lake Trout, sorry. Um, but looking at this pattern, I don't see why it wouldn't work for, for other kinds of, uh, for other kinds of trout. And you vary the size based on the place you want to fish it and the intended target. Now, what I've done is I put in a little bit, a bump of a thread to, uh, to make sure that at the end, when I put my, uh, when I put my eyes, I don't run into the eye of the hook. And I'm going to start by building the body first. Now, to build a body, I put in first the wire ribbing, which is uh, medium size silver wire. You don't want the wire to be too thick. And what I always do with ribbing and mylar tinsel and all of those things, I start right at the front and I wrap thread over the entire length of the shank, okay? So that my, my wire does not create an extra bump at the, uh, at the tail end of the fly. And I'm going to repeat the same thing with the body material. With, in this case, it's a bit of an experiment. I found this at a, at a sewing shop and it just looked good to me, so I, uh, I bought it. Um, I'm going to go back to the front a little bit and attach this glitter material. It's a flat thing. It just lies very nice and flat on the body. And now I'm going to move the thread back to the front, do a quick not here just to hold the thread in place while I do the wrapping <clears throat> and use the rotary vise to do the wrapping because it's as Dave explained with a mylar it just gives you the nice the nicer body okay. and so this way you get and this is maybe not so important with this material that I'm using here but with mylar if you really want to have a very nice looking flat body you want to have the underbody as, as smooth and even as possible. Okay. So secure this as well as possible. Trim and then repeat the process. If you have already, if you like to put the eyes on first, it's easier. You don't need, you don't need a, you don't need a knot. At this point to hold your thread you can just put it on the on the bobbin holder here but in my case i needed the extra knot and then just take the rib and put it on now this is silver on silver i can't see anything but i'm just kind of 
tying it on with my mind's eye, so to speak. And uh, it seems to work. So the, the, the purpose here is not so much to give extra structure to this because this has already um, all the structure it needs. It's just to reinforce that, that body because, you know, uh, this is maybe not as fragile as, as mylar, but it's it's still going to be fairly fragile. Okay, now this is going to be an upside down pattern. So I'm going to be putting in the throat first. And for the throat, I'm just using some uh, calf tail, which is right here. Maybe I, I need to refocus a little bit on the... Uh, maybe zoom in a bit more. And refocus here. Okay, that should show the, the hook a little better. So I'm going to take a little bit of hair off this calf tail. And I don't have a magic recipe, I just eyeball it and and pull the fuzz out of it, you know, standard standard hair procedures, everything Dave said applies very nicely, although I don't do it as nicely as he does, but at, at least the principle is the same. Okay, so measure the amount of hair you want here for for the throat of the fly. Keep it well pinched between your fingers and go and secure it. Okay. Uh, no. So trim any extra length here in the front. Cover your wraps, keep it all nice and tidy and flip the hook over for the polar bear. Now the polar bear part is again similar to what you've seen before so I'm not going to do any explaining I just grab the hair put it on and be done with it and hope it comes out nice so again I'll get a bunch of, of hair off the skin mine looks kind of like this it's pretty much similar length and and size to what what Dave was using I think by the looks of it and when I pull the fuzz out, I'll, I'll set it aside because this is, once I have enough of it, I'm going to, uh, to try it out as a, as a dubbing material because it just looks very interesting as dubbing. I don't know how well it, it works and what, where can I use white dubbing, but I think there's got to be a, a place where this, this stuff is useful. It's very, very... Um, very springy so it's that's why I'm thinking it's probably uh, tough to tough to dub but it's probably also quite nice okay so what I'm aiming for is about two shank lengths in the wing and this hair is about the right size for that and then just Put it in here oops and of course this is where my thread breaks all right and I have to re rethread this bobbin if you just bear with me here a moment what happens is um, the amount of the amount of wax in thread usually doesn't matter, but I found a particular case where it does, where it does matter, and it matters a lot. And that is when you use one of these uh, Norvice bobbins. You're supposed to, to wrap the thread around one of the arms of the bobbin, and it works beautifully. But there is a small catch. And that is, I don't know if I can show this here, the thread comes at a very tight angle to the tube, to the ceramic tube. 
And if your thread is heavily waxed, which this particular uni thread of mine is quite heavily waxed, you get quite a bit of wax buildup there. And that wax buildup can actually impede the flow of the thread through the tube. And so what, what ends up happening occasionally is you might be pulling too hard on the thread without realizing it. So if ever you find that you know you're you're tying flies and and things aren't working quite the way they're supposed to be working, double check and make sure that your um, your thread hasn't deposited a ton of wax on the uh, on the tube because that can can create uh, some pretty unpleasant fraying. Okay, so do the same business of lifting up the wing. You know, so if you don't already have a, a tapered body that you place the wing on top, if you're doing this little trick with the thread, that'll, that'll lift your wing up nicely. And then trim the excess hair. And this is the point where I need to put a bit of flash and then the peacock curl on top. But before I do that, I'm going to use some um, some bead chain. And so I'm going to place it between this tapered head that I built after putting on the hair and the little thread bump that was already. Okay, take that back. I was getting carried away with the speed tying here and uh, whoops and I forgot that I need to flip my ply back so remember the uh, whatever eyes you're putting on with the purpose of flipping the flipping the fly so this is the same idea as a as a clouser minnow with the distinction that this is not as heavy. So do a few, a few wraps here. And these eyes are not going to be going anywhere. Okay. Now for the final part, I take a little bit of green crystal flash. So I take uh, three strands, or I should say three half strands, are long enough, and fold them, fold them in two, and then, because I have those eyes in place there, I'm not going to try to wrap them along the thread, I'm just going to fold them in two, so that gives me six strands of crystal flash, going to place them on top of the hair and judge the length that I want to have and then simply wrap over top while keeping them in the correct position and this way nothing bad is going to happen fold the remaining fibers back and wrap some thread over them that'll lock them in place forever and now to finish the fly off completely I'm going to use a few strands of peacock curl and I've got here, I'll try the same number because these are fairly, fairly skinny. I'm trying different, different things. I tried some straight off of feather. Those are quite, quite fat. So I'm going to go now with a bundle that I'm hoping is going to be a little more forgiving than using straight off of feather. So this is fairly skinny that I bought as a, you know, as a bundle, um, not a whole tail feather. I'm going to just cut off the tips. I'm not going to get that nice look of, you know, curvy, uh, uh, a curved topping on the fly. So these are much more straight, so they should be more forgiving in terms of allowing tying as a bunch together. So I'm gonna place them up top here and wrap over them backwards from the tying point and then bring the thread forward. My good 
probably just move to the eye of the behind the eye of the hook and then also wrap some more in front. This should secure this peacock curl very nicely. And just tie it off and go and do a whip finish. Oh, I have a stray polar bear hair. I'll deal with stray hairs after I've done the whip finish. And again, double whip finish. Between the eye, the hook, and the eyes. And by the way, the, the bead chain eyes are a courtesy of Home Depot. It's, uh, they seem to work very well. Okay. And that's, um, that's the fly. And this is the point where, you know, you just, you take all of this and you, you look for things that are completely out of place and bug you like this bit of bear hair, you know, just pull on, on the stray bits. And then maybe I'm going to put a little bit of, of head cement to just give an ex a little bit of extra security here. And that's going to, of course, consist of Sally Hansen as usual. Uh, there's a bit of ha Sally Hansen. And the only thing that I would do different with this fly is if I wanted to fish this in a lake, I would leave it like this because the these bead chain eyes are enough weight to flip it over. So you're pretty much guaranteed snag free fishing. And it's your <coughs> it's your sinking line that is going to, to sink the fly, not the weight of the fly. If I were to tie this for stream fishing, I would go with the heavy dumbbell eyes because they're with a extra current and everything you do want that weight and sometimes you just fish it on a floating line um, so the extra weight helps not just flip it but also sink the fly in a lake I don't think that's an issue because you wouldn't be fishing this on a on a floating line and that's that still I couldn't do it in 10 minutes so sorry about that that's fine <laughs> <laughs>